<laughs> it's beginning, oh yes, it's finally beginning. Well, well, well. It appears that the votes have come in favor of Dragon Ball Shit T, I mean GT. And, as a man of my word, I will be covering the transformation of the most iconic transformation in all of anime history. You know, biasedly anime history. The Super Saiyan 4. The greatest transformation to never exist in canon. Alright, so first let us start off with the journey to Super Saiyan 4. And let me remind you, there is apparently two ways you can go about becoming the legendary and iconic Super Saiyan 4. First, we're going to do chronological order. And that is Goku. Well, it starts with an ass pool. A literal ass pool. Old Kai and everyone gets on up in young Goku's pantalone area and they, they really give it some effort and pull the tail free. Just releasing his uh, Saiyan tail makes no sense why they couldn't just heal the tail area and help the tail regrow, you know. But they had to break out some comedically large forceps and just kind of get on up in there. Goku then absorbs some Blutes waves, Blutz waves, from uh, Earth as he was on planet Vegeta, or planet plant, however you want to name it at the time. He witnessed the Earth and it was reflecting enough Blutes waves that he triggered into his transformation into a grade 8. However, because Goku has never canonically controlled his grade 8, he immediately goes into a rage. This rage immediately triggers its Super Saiyan ability because he's already had it unlocked and can access it so naturally. So as a golden grade 8, Goku's rampaging, and it's not until he's brought to his senses that it's seemingly that the transformation kind of condenses on itself. The Super Saiyan Golden Uzaru, uh, Uzaru Grade 8, whatever you want to call it, kind of condenses down, and out of nowhere, Goku gets his pants back, a bodysuit of red fur, longer black hair, and a really red colored fur. His eyes also turn yellow, and he has achieved Super Saiyan 4. Now let's look at the other method. Yes, 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 the the other one, Vegeta. Vegeta doesn't have a tail, and he is not as lucky as Goku to get an ass pool. He has a smart wife, but they do not come to the conclusion that the ass pool is the best way to achieve this transformation. So, Bulma invents a Blutes Wave cannon, which sends, con I guess, concentrated Blutes Waves directly into the Saiyan, and through their eyes that it forcibly triggers the transformation, which doesn't make sense because it said that the tails contain the glands needed, so maybe the tail doesn't, but anyway. Vegeta transforms into a great ape. Not a golden great ape, just a great ape. Remember, Vegeta knows how to control his great ape power. He then falsely rampages because he's Vegeta and it, you know, is GT. He grabs up a Super Saiyan 4 Goku and squeezes him so hard that Goku can't escape and is in very much a ton of pain. It's even more pain if you listen to it in the sub. They really accentuate that he is suffering and can't free himself. So, I guess Great Ape is better than Super Saiyan 4? Uh, debate, d debate me in the comments, you know. Go for it, because the scene's literally in the anime. So anyway, Vegeta realizes he's just playing around and releases Goku transforming into a golden grade 8 and then condensing down into the legendary Super Saiyan 4. Again, mind you, magically growing pants, magically growing gloves, and, you know, I don't know. I don't even know. Is Super Saiyan 4 magic? Because everything else about the Saiyans, even in Z, the Z era, mind you, when Vegeta explains grade 8, is all science-based, not magical. But Super Saiyan 4 maybe has magical properties that doesn't make sense to anything else in the series. So anyway, with this power boost, they go on to fight a Omega Shinron. And we're done with this. Mind you, I'd like to note that while possessed by Baby, Vegeta was not a full Saiyan. And it is hypothesized that a full Saiyan is required 
to turn into a Super Saiyan 4 and that half breeds could not access it because they're just not Saiyan enough. However, we are going to get into this a little bit later into the video in the hero section. Now we're going to kind of dive into the uh, appearance of the Super Saiyan 4, kind of look at why they went that direction. So red symbolizes power, but get this, so does yellow. Yellow also symbolizes power. So the question is, why did they make the fur red? Well, to put it simply, because it's GT. It's GT. You don't need another reason. They just thought it looked cool. And yeah, sure, it does look cool. But it doesn't make sense. So, the Great Ape is brown. Okay? It's brown. It's a giant monkey. The Golden Great Ape, it's in the name. It's yellow. It's golden. Like a Super Saiyan. And then you're telling me that in a, a golden light that helps condense this form down into a humanoid form, this golden monkey into a humanoid form and the humanoid form comes out with uh, red red fur and, and you know I'm not gonna quote myself saying I know what color theory you know how deep a color theory goes but I just don't think there's any circumstance where something that is purely yellow can just like uh, go into something being purely red without some some colors mixing in there like a lot of colors mixing in there but uh, you know what do I know so anyway so, the Golden Great Ape turns into a red humanoid Super Saiyan 4 with black hair, not red hair, black hair. Somehow, the transformation ditches the Super Saiyan color scheme of golden yellow hair in favor of the base Saiyan's, uh, you know, natural hair colors. But, uh, again, doesn't make sense. But it's also GT. GT also doesn't make sense. Uh... But with the Super Saiyan 4, there's some things to note. Vegeta's fur and Goku's fur are not one-to-one -one the same color. Goku's hair is actually black, while Vegeta's hair is actually brown. Though, another interesting thing to note, neither are their eyes. Goku's eyes are yellow. Vegeta's eyes are like the Super Saiyan bluish teal color they got going on. So, there's some variance to this, and, you know, you could say, well, maybe it's because Vegeta went a different route, that his comes off of these slight altercations, while Goku's is technically more natural to the Saiyan itself, because he does still have a tail when he transforms now. And, you know, that, that's a good hypothesis. Does it make sense? No. But it's also GT, and GT doesn't make sense. And I'm going to repeat that a lot. So... That's their physical differences in the uh, transformation. Ignoring Dragon Ball heroes, well, you know what? We're not going to ignore heroes. Gohan and Bardock in Super Saiyan 4 look basically like slightly different versions of Goku with different hairstyles, slight altercations to color. Um, and that's about it. That's it. Red, Red Monkey Man. Red Monkey Man go brr, brr, and you know, it's great. Oh, Yes, interesting thing. Uh, when they power up into their full power states, which I'm going to talk about later, they have the red Saiya energy, the legendary red energy that they don't really expand upon ever. And you know what? Uh, we're going to move on to the other things. We're going to just dive on in there and talk about the power of the Super Saiyan 4. Note that while it is never specifically stated in any media ever what the Super Saiyan 4 multiplier is, we do have some statements that Super Saiyan 3 is the Saiyan's maximum power, you know, brought out. And it's just so much strain on the body that it, it hurts. It hurts in the way that the, the strain and the key strain actually causes the person to not have a lot of time in the transformation. While Super Saiyan 4 is actually stated by Old Kai to basically release the dormant potential of the user. Now, these are some very, very key words here. I want you to understand that. Old Kai, which is in the era of GT, still considered a credible source, so we have to treat him as a credible source, unlike in Super, where he is not a credible source. So, in GT... Uh, Old Kai actually makes the statement that Goku should have access to his dormant power, his dormant potential. 
This is not like Potential Unleashed at all. I don't care what anyone says. Old Kai's Potential Unleashed doesn't bring the user to its maximum potential. That's a misconception. He actually brings the user to his maximum potential and beyond it. Well, if Super Saiyan 4 is just giving the user access to their dormant potential, that means that Old Kai's potential unlockability is still a far better way to gain power for Goku in the series, and it is never once considered. So, you're saying that dormant power, full dormant power Goku is better than something that is beyond your dormant power unleashed. But, you know, it's GT, you know. Who cares? So, um, what we get into here is the issue that Super Saiyan 4 may not actually be stronger than Super Saiyan 3 at all. So, we're looking at the fact that if it's the Super Saiyan 3 statements from some old guidebooks before it was cl uh, clarified as a times 400, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's still said to bring out the maximum power uh, potential of the user, which is his maximum dormant ability. That would mean that Super Saiyan 4 and Super Saiyan 3 are basically equal levels of power, according to Old Kai. This means that, okay, what it means is that Super Saiyan 4 is solely superior to Super Saiyan 3 because it has added abilities and is easier to maintain as it doesn't just, you know, ruin your body. You can actually hold it better. But uh, in Heroes, it's actually said that Super Saiyan 4 is actually just the, the great ape power condensed down. Which, if that's the case, you know, why do you need to be a golden great ape, aka Super Saiyan, while in a great ape? And condense it down? Because if it's just the great ape power condensed down, might as well just be brown fur. You know, I mean, hey, I, I'm down for, you know, normal looking things that make sense. That, uh, you know, but that's something Heroes could uh, explore, maybe different variants. Uh, it the form apparently also enhances the Saiyan power to better adapt to combat situations. Ice Shinron freezes Super Saiyan 4 Goku one time, solid. Goku somehow gets out of it, you know, he's Super Saiyan 4. When Ice does it again, however, Goku's not phased by it, and it's like his body has adapted to that temperature and cannot be frozen again. Or at least it's able to counteract the frozenness far faster than we can perceive it happening on screen. Uh, Super Saiyan 4 has the ability to grow clothes. Everyone knows that when a great ape transforms in human clothes, their clothes rip off of them. That is a fact. And the only time they get clothes after the fact when they detransform is one, someone gets them some clothes, or two, if they had Saiyan armor or intergalactic armor, whatever you want to call it, it stretches with the user for transformations, including grade eight, and therefore it will shrink back down. However, in GT, that's not the case. And I, I get it, it's a design choice. You don't want naked grown men on the TV screen, but uh, that, that's not stopped them before, like in Z. I mean, we see Goku's ass in Z. They could have easily done that. But I would like to note that uh, upon detransforming, Vegeta's gloves go from full fingered gloves back to his cut off leather gloves that he has in base. Uh, also, I probably forgot to mention this, but Saiyans actually get bulkier and a little taller while in Super Saiyan 4, signifying that they've grown in reach and power. And, uh, you know, with other things, you know, it's a reach. It's a far reach. Uh, the Super Saiyan 4 power, though, if we look at it, at guidebooks, now this is guidebooks, guidebooks don't matter. Guidebooks state that Great Ape is times 10, and they also state that uh, Super Saiyan uh, is times 50. We, we know that's not really the case anymore. So that would mean maybe that Super Saiyan 4 is 500. So, at most, but then you gotta look at it's condensing down, so maybe it's 1,000. But then we got statements that it's the full dormant potential of the user and not an actual multiplier so there's that also so maybe it's a just same as super saiyan 3 at the time maybe it's just times 400 the base power let's kind of just dive on into the uh, evolutions of the super saiyan 4 so you know starts off in base you turn into your great ape you go golden great ape 
you condense it down, and you're a Super Saiyan 4. But, did you know that if you absorb enough of this mysterious Saiyan power, which is just Saiyan energy, mind you, it can be from any Saiyan, even quarter Saiyans like Pan, it just has to have Saiyan energy, you can achieve the Super Full Power Saiyan 4, which is an empowered transformation which pushes the Super Saiyan 4's power and ability above what it is in base. However, this transformation does not become permanent. This evolution is not permanent. Goku can't just whip out Super Full Power Saiyan 4 whenever he wants to. He can't. It is in the series that he absolutely needs someone to be donating their energy to him. And we see this in the Shadow Dragon Saga whenever Goku needs more energy. He has the Saiyans, you know, Pan, oh not Pan, I think it was Goten, Gohan, and Trunks donate energy, which Goku then found out that he could just basically suck up more than what they were giving him and turn into the Super Full Power Saiyan, which was slightly more elevated. It was to the point he was absorbing so much energy and becoming so powerful, it actually run the risk of killing him. But, you know, so that's how you achieve the Super Full Power Saiyan, which again would basically be in a vein similar, to, this is actually more similar to a Potential Unleashed than Base Super Saiyan 4 because Base Super Saiyan 4 is your hidden potential brought out. And then Super Full Power Saiyan 4 is going beyond that already brought out potential. So it's more akin to, you know, Potential Unleashed. So... And then we have the other version, which we find in Dragon Ball Heroes. We get the uh, limit broken version of Super Full Say, uh, Super Full Power Saiyan Four, Limit Breaker. This is uh, when they absorb not only enough Super Saiyan, not Super Saiyan, but Saiyan power from Saiyans, but also every time it has been achieved, a Saiyan that has donated energy has also had divine key which seemingly is the catalyst for entering into this limit broken form they need that mixture of saya power and divine energy which will push them well beyond what super full power saiyan 4 does just extensively like putting it on a divine level where it is easily able to fight and uh you know super saiyan blue whereas super saiyan 4 couldn't compete with super saiyan blue in dragon ball heroes manga at least to my recollection it's been a while do you want to increase your very own saiyan energy when you're working out do you want to feel the power and keenness of the super saiyan 4 transformation well, just know that I've partnered with Dubby Energy, a clean new energy drink blend, which is most popular flavor currently is Dragonade, a dragon fruit, pink strawberry lemonade type mix known to be in both sweet with a slight hint of sour. This drink will build up your red energy so that you too may go on to fight evil shadow dragons at all times of the day and night. Feel free to use it while playing games as it is known to enhance your gaming capabilities and increase awareness. Please use the link in my description below to order your dubby or if you do not wish to do that, I will drop you off a coupon code which will give you 10% off of your next dubby purchase. Now back on to the uh, variants and the evolutions of Super Saiyan 4. It's not a Super Saiyan 4 video if we don't mention the legendary Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, which seemingly has his very own version of Super Saiyan 4. His hair, unlike Goku's black and Vegeta's brown, is actually a red, a reddish orange, which signifies that he's more powerful, but get this, his aura has sparkles in it, which to me is akin to uh, Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue Evolved, where the key is so condensed that it's actually bursting and creating those effects, signifying that Gogeta's on his Super Saiyan 4, his base Super Saiyan 4, is on a level of power beyond anything we've ever seen. And due to that, however, it shortens the fusion dance from a solid 30 minutes to a beautiful round 10 minutes which is only five minutes more than Super Saiyan 3. So that goes to show that the form is so powerful and still straining that it does impact fusion power time limits. 
Fun fact, however, because this is already going to go over 20 minutes, so I'm going to throw it in. Every time Goku has transformed into a Super Saiyan 4, he doesn't go from his base form straight into Super Saiyan 4. He actually generates a orb around him of yellow energy, which is much bigger than what we see on screen because, you know, you know, perception and angles. But in that orb, you can see that he's actually going through the different transformation stages of the uh, Super Saiyan 4. He goes into his golden grade 8, and you can actually see outlines of the grade 8 peaking from the uh, orb itself until finally finishing off and revealing he's a Super Saiyan 4. So, Goku just doesn't whip out Super Saiyan 4. You know, he actually does, every time he goes into it, kind of go through each transformation stage, at least in GT. And that's where we segue into our next segment, where we talk about the changes to Super Saiyan 4 that uh, Dragon Ball Heroes has made. The biggest one is half Saiyans have the ability to access Super Saiyan 4 so long as they've had a tail, it seems. Though it was also said they couldn't decide what color to make his fur, so they instead let him become a Super Saiyan God instead. And that's fine, because, uh, you know, we don't need more GT mess-ups, so making him a god was way better of a choice. So, we know that in GT, half Sands can achieve it, and if the uh, developers of the series can agree on it, uh, half Sands that were born without a tail can also enter into Super Saiyan 4. And if they can't agree, they'll turn into the much more efficiently designed Super Saiyan God. And another thing that's different is uh, Goku... Vegeta, Gogeta, Vegito, whatever you want to say, if they're not already in Super Saiyan 4, they can just instantly turn into a Super Saiyan 4. They do not need to go through every single stage, whether it's in rapid succession or not. They just kind of like, raw, and they turn into a uh, they turn into a monkey man, and uh, that, that's it. That, that's basically the big changes that they made, and uh, but they also let us know that there's also enhanced states and the enhanced states is broly has a legendary variant of super saiyan 4 again we don't have any multipliers to work with and we know broly was op but you know only op in the time frame he was introduced in really so questionably he's weaker than perfect cell in a sense but stronger than super saiyan goku post frieza and you know we, and Super Saiyan Vegeta, so you know, we're looking at the fact that unknown power level plus unknown power level enhancer just makes unknown power upon it that just kind of like dominates whenever he fights. Uh, Super Saiyan 4 has a like, this is before you know, Super had the uh, blue Kaioken or Kaioken like principles added on in the manga. Where Super Saiyan 4 and Heroes kind like whips out Kaioken quite often. Vegito does it. Gogeta does it. I believe I, th I believe even Goku in Super Saiyan 4 whips out a Kaioken. That just kind of begs me the question that if the fusions can freely use the transformation, why does Vegeta never use it? Because he shares the memories of the fusions with Goku. And that would mean he knows how to access Kaioken. Yet he never does it to amplify himself. That just, that's just like the least Vegeta thing you can do, especially for a Vegeta that come from a GT timeline. Um, again, it's GT. GT lore, mind you. Heroes is its own set of non-canon rules. And while it is epic, we do need to remember that like GT, it is non-canon. And that the stuff that happens in it shouldn't be taken to heart at all, ever. It's just like, it's fan service. Let's just admit it. It's fan service. It's not debatable. Fan service. It doesn't affect the series as a whole. It's cool. It's fun. It's hip. That's all that matters. And uh, when we look at it, the Super Saiyan 4 is iconic. It is beautiful. It is majestic. And uh, even though it's all that, I can talk greatly about how I love its design. Even though I still think the design doesn't make sense in the overall scheme of things. The design is pretty hype, and it is a pretty hype form. However, it doesn't make sense. But let's talk about one last thing before we end off this segment, and uh, we're going to talk about the fact that Goku goes into Super Saiyan 4 without Bloops waves after he's achieved Super Saiyan 4. 
while Vegeta admits that he needs the Blutes waves to enter into Super Saiyan 4. He can't just willy-nilly transform into this. In the series, Vegeta says that Goku is a special case. I'm here to refute that. Vegeta's a fucking idiot. He does not know anything, and let's just admit that right now. He does know about Grade 8, yes, he knows about his Super Saiyan forms, but he knows nothing about Super Saiyan 4 enough to say that Goku's a special case at all. So, let's look at the facts. Goku has a natural tail when he first triggers into the Super Saiyan 4 transformation, and he has that tail every time he transforms into a Super Saiyan 4. Every time. Let's look at when Vegeta depowers from his Super Saiyan 4 transformation, his tail that magically grew disappears. It's gone. There is no tail. And what this is telling me is that for someone to just whip out Super Saiyan 4, ignoring heroes, because that's even more non-canon even to GT, ignoring that, that Vegeta can only not do what Goku does without the Blutes Waves machine is simply because he doesn't have the tail that can just trigger it naturally as Goku, who does have a natural tail, and he's went into the transformation while he had his own natural tail. His tail wasn't a magical construct that come out of nowhere because, you know, GT. So, that's how I think it is. Goku's not a special case. That makes no sense. No sense at all. And Vegeta is not a person you should treat as a reliable narrator because he had just achieved Super Saiyan 4 himself. And if you take that as a fact, you know, that's just ignorant on your part in a sense. Because, you know, Vegeta hasn't even used the form more than like a full day. And he's talking about special cases. I believe, and it's the most logical conclusion, that the only reason Vegeta can't whip back into Super Saiyan 4 at will is simply because he does not have a tail and therefore his body did not evolve with the form enough that he can just, with his tail, trigger into that transformation. But let's, let's just remember that in Heroes, everybody who's a Saiyan doesn't need a tail to transform into Super Saiyan 4. They kind of retcon that in the series because the, all the heroes are kind of based on a GT-like timeline, but not the exact GT timeline. Because, I mean, let's admit, Xeno Goku is from a timeline where he didn't run off with the dragons. But, uh, you know, anyway... That is enough on Super Saiyan 4. I, I honestly, I couldn't find much on this transformation that isn't kind of just like fan service, hearsay, and whatnot. We you know we, we have the anime and it tells them some stuff, but when you kind of look online, most of the lore is rewritten by hero stuff nowadays. You know, sure, it's divided up, but you know, even the fan discussions, they really rely on uh, heroes' fan service information. So, uh, yeah, this has been Protector Cross bringing you the Super Saiyan 4 Examined video. Whether I wanted to do this or not is up in the air because I really have disdain for GT. I think that, uh, I think it's a, okay, it's okay. I'm not gonna say it's, I'm not gonna say it's horrible, it's okay. But if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and comment below. Again, like I said before, debate me if you think I'm wrong. Debate me if you think I'm right. I'll, I'll take up any stance sometimes. Um, I really hope you did enjoy the video. It's just there's not a lot of stuff on Super Saiyan 4. I think it's an overhyped form. And, you know, it's cool in design. But other than that, it's kind of just overhyped. So, I hope you have a good day, a good night. Uh, whatever time it is, have a good time. And this is Protector Cross. Signing off. Thank you.